faithfulness. Tell the world of his salvation. Hey, hey, good morning. Praise the Lord. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Come, let's praise the Lord. <laughs> We're on our way to Pentecost. Let's get our Instagram family in. Hey, good morning, Zoomers. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. So glad that you all are here. Hey, good morning, classmates. Good morning, School of the Holy Spirit. Near and far, far and near. Hey, it's a great day. It's a wonderful season. We are in the season of Holy Spirit like never before. And I'm so excited. How about you? Are you excited? I'm so excited, man. Woo, come, let's praise the Lord. Good morning, Terry Green. God bless you, Sean. Hey, Rhonda Cock, are you traveling? God bless you. Travel with angels. Jonathan Bowler, God bless you, Travis. Good morning, Rhonda Sue. Yes, good morning. Deborah Brown, good morning. Christopher Redden, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Elder Betty Johnson, let's go. Wendell and Foster, God bless you, Felicia Anderson. Terry Green, good morning. Sean at Gomes, Rosetta. Hey, what's going on? From eternity. Good morning, God bless you. Good morning, good morning, and good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're coming in, coming up in the timeline. Zoomers, free conference call, IG. Facebook Live, God bless you. It's a wonderful day in the kingdom of God, and I'm excited. Can you tell? <laughs> I bet you can't tell, but I'm excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so thrilled uh, to be teaching Holy Spirit in this season. So I was in a service the other day with co-pastor uh, Brenda Jones, right? And uh, it was so, so, so delicious. What a wonderful a women's conference that it was amazing praise god and i only got to be there one night was able to uh stream a little bit one and then i just had all the other stuff but i was committed to be there and uh dr sharon nesbitt some some part of arkansas was there she was the speaker at thursday and friday she was amazing she's an apostle of the lord and walks heavily in that apostolic dimension frequency. So it was right up my alley. So, um, you know, after after she ministered and she took her time in the word and she took her time ministering at the altar, there was manifestations of healing and deliverance, prophetic words, of course, it was amazing. And of course, then I'm sitting there. So she says, you're Bishop here? I said, yes, yes, ma'am. Welcome, welcome to our city. And uh, she said, um, she said, well, you're not about to retire. <laughs> she said, you're not about to retire. You're about to refire. And uh, this is going to be an amazing season uh, for you. And she said, and this, let me tell you, she says, let me just tell you what I see. And um, she said, I just see you working the church. Uh, to come into the knowledge of Holy Spirit. She said, you have been called in this season uh, to make sure that the authentic, genuine Holy Spirit uh, is present. And I tell you, the, the people in the church started clapping. I was like, y'all be quiet. <laughs> Let me get my word. <laughs> and it was just such a confirmation. And then she said, and then I see the school of the Holy Spirit. She said, you're going to just dig in and dig in and dig in. She said, and churches who have cut Holy Spirit off, people who have cut Holy Spirit off, I see you going in, I see you traveling overseas again and taking the message of Holy Spirit. Uh, she said, and just the Holy Ghost, just Holy Ghost. I just see that all around you. <laughs> I know I, I was so tickled I said oh Jesus <laughs> uh, so welcome to the school of the Holy Spirit it's so exciting to be here praise God and that was such a confirming word of course uh, it was not something that I didn't know but it certainly was a a great confirmation 
And uh, she said, I just see Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost all around you. And she said, I, I see a school of Holy Spirit. And uh, but I, you're going to travel overseas again. And she said, I don't know what happened 20 years ago, but God says that same energy, that same fuel. I got to get the exact words. She said, but you're going to travel in that again. And people are going uh, to to be engaging Holy Spirit like never before. And this will establish a pathway uh, for an outpouring. Uh, that's your assignment. You, that's what you are called to do. I just see Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, and 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 the people in the in the. I'm sitting on the front row. Church is large, and and uh, people are jammed in there. Women are there, and men, and uh, they're just clapping and going. <laughs> so I praise God for the impact and the influence. Every day, uh, I get phone calls. You know, every day opportunities. Uh, churches, pastors, city leaders, can you come and teach my team of the Holy Spirit? Uh, the business world, I just sense that even that, thank you, Lord, that the business world is going to open up in, in terms of training, uh, 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 development, uh, professional development. Listen, even in the C-suite, even there, you need Holy Spirit. When you're making decisions for people's lives, you need Holy Spirit uh, and you need the wisdom of God. You can do the right thing, but it's so disruptive that it could be the wrong time and it could be done the wrong way. And so we have to be very mindful. A uh, Holy Spirit superintends the affairs of our lives. And uh, what, what, what we have got to just be more mindful, more mindful of Holy Spirit in our daily lives, our business lives, our professional lives, uh, that we actually recognize a Holy Spirit uh, like never before. I don't know uh, why we're having such issues with Zoom. It could be my um, could be my my uh, iPad here, but we're going to keep it going. Hey, good morning, Instagram IG. What's up this morning? Come on, like, tag, and share. Praise God. Boy, it says, I'm taking Holy Spirit to the mountain of education. Praise God. Help us to release our assignment. Absolutely, Bishop Jackson, you blessed us so much. He helps us with our weaknesses. We're going to talk about that today even more. Um, sometimes, um, Dr. Jessica, it's not the what, it's the when. And it's the why. And it's the how. And it's the who. <laughs> But all of that comes in the wisdom of Holy Spirit. And we really have to be mindful uh, of what, listen, Holy Spirit is lining and aligning everything to God's perfect timing. The perfect timing of God is, is what we sometimes just can't nail down <laughs> to one. <laughs> he says, I took the assessment and I'm a sanguine, but it's wrong and I'm offended. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. And so it's, it's just learning, literally retraining yourself to walk in agreement with Holy Spirit, to fight fiercely for your fellowship with Holy Spirit, to fight fiercely for your fellowship with Holy Spirit and to fight, to fight, to fight. Uh, Jen says, help me to get this temperament in alignment with Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Hey, classmates, good morning, Pam 995. Good morning, Shante Marie 1. Those of you that are coming in on IG, those of you that are on Zoom, God bless you. Free conference call. Those of you that are on our Facebook Live page, please go to the page, School of the Holy Spirit, and make sure that you are following. Click that following button on the School of Holy Spirit. Uh, you can go right there. Uh, on Facebook, if you're on Facebook, School of Holy Spirit. If you're on IG, make sure you're following me uh, there on IG on our page. But make sure that if you are on Facebook, 
even if you don't get on often, that you would um, click the following uh, button on the School of Holy Spirit page. That's so vitally important so that we can keep an accurate track. Our algorithms can track our followers, and that's really important. So Holy Spirit controlled temperaments, Holy Spirit controlled me, <laughs> Holy Spirit controlled emotions, Holy Spirit controlled temperaments because we want to be completely sanctified. This is spiritual formation. This is in-depth spiritual formation. Somebody write that in the chat. Spiritual formation. We don't talk a lot about spiritual formation uh, like we used to back in the day. I think I believe God is bringing it back. Thank you, Louisiana. Thank you, Pam. Thank you so much. She said that Louisiana is praying for me. What? Run, not right. God bless you, Brown. God bless you, that girl. Hey, Cheryl, a four. I am. I see you. I see you. Thank you so much. Smooth Elder Barbara J. God bless you for joining. Thank you. Come up the timeline. So excited about those of you that watch and don't type and watch and take good notes. Go preach and teach. Praise the Lord. I love it. I love it. And so uh, spiritual formation, discipleship, spiritual formation, there's not a lot of uh, conversation about spiritual formation. Denise Henderson, uh, yesterday, Dr. Henderson preached, uh, let's remember the assignment. The assignment is that Jesus says that we would go and make disciples, that we would go and make disciples. We know this text, Matthew chapter number 28, says that we would go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, that we would go and make disciples. And then verse 20 says, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And so this business of spiritual formation, good morning, Sean, good morning, darling, Elder Tab, good morning, Melinda, coming up the time at Barbara, Etheridge, Steve Etheridge, thank you. Gwendolyn Foster, Geraldine Sanders, come on up, keep coming in. Thank you so much. Like, tag, and share. That we would go and make disciples. That we would uh, challenge and confront and conform uh, believers into the image of Christ make disciples, make disciples, that if in fact we are experiencing Christ, we are experiencing our faith in vibrant and healthy ways, that we would reproduce after our kind, that we would reproduce, that we would make disciples, uh, that we would evangelize, Good morning, TJ. God bless you all for your service last night. Valerie Thomas, Pastor John Davis. Yes, that we would make disciples, that we would shape the lives of people, not just that they would have um, a church or that they would uh, have a ministry, but that they would have the character of Christ. That's what spiritual formation is about. Good morning, Dr. Valerie McCune. Lord, God bless each of you out late last night, this morning, serve, serving the community of faith. Thank you. Thank you for your service. But that we would have the character of Christ. I don't know sometimes if we lose sight of that. Yes, I'm anointed. But do I have the character of Christ? Yes, I'm in the ministry. Yes, I'm an anointed servant of the Lord. But do I have the character of Christ? Is Christ evident in my character? When the service is over, <laughs> how do I talk to people? When the service is over, when I when I don't have the mic, 
to pay my bills on time. When, when I'm not in vestments and I don't have on my collar, or I don't have on my robe because I'm in the choir or I'm a Levite, uh, uh, am I on time for my job? Do I go to work on time? Uh, I, I I know that uh, uh, no one can beat me at church. No one can beat me at preaching, singing, teaching, my public life. But do I harbor unforgiveness? Do I take too long to forgive? <laughs> I'm going to write that book, Valerie, when the music stops. When the, when the benediction has been given, do I beat my wife? Uh, am I rude? Am, am I sharp with her? Am I impatient with my children? Uh, do, I, do I disdain my wife's wisdom and counsel? Yes, I'm the pastor. Yes, <laughs> I, I have a great church. I have good deacons. I have good leaders, presbyters. I have good elders. I have a, 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 a great leadership team. But when I go home and I, as I'm driving, I, I don't buckle my seatbelt. I, I don't follow the laws of the land. I don't go the speed limit. Do, do, I, do I have Christ's character? This is spiritual formation. <laughs> uh, they, they have, I was going to say to them, they, I love uh, um, uh, Butch's baked beans. I love them. And I love the commercial more than I love the product, but I love the commercial. And the talking dog, I just love it. But uh, I, think that, I think the thing that gets me is roll that beautiful bean footage. Hey, glory. <laughs> Whoa, come on, Sister Ruthie said, Clarice. <laughs> oh, my God. Roll that beautiful bean footage. How you act at home? Are you disorganized? Do you keep a dirty house, ladies? Are you unkept? Are you disorganized? Your home, clothes everywhere, towers everywhere. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, oh, my God. You can work us up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know exactly what song to sing and how to do it. Yeah, you're a great faithful usher. You're an amazing uh, security person and your work helps. You're amazing, but you got a little, you got a little anger issue. See, this, this, this. <laughs> yeah, roll that beautiful bean footage. How, how do you talk to your children? How do you talk to your animals, your dogs? How do you talk when no one's watching to your team at work? What do you, what is your conversation? Are you gossip? Are you messy? Are you in everybody's business? <laughs> On the job, can they bring nasty stuff to you? And, uh, you know, you, you, you laugh at it and you, you, you don't, you, <laughs> you don't have the, the through and through penetration of the Christ character. Uh, 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 it might be in the outer person, but the inner person is still struggling. <laughs> oh my God. So that's why Jesus says to us that we must make disciples, that we must make disciples until he has sanctified us through and through. First Thessalonians chapter number five, verse 23 now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians. <laughs> Dear, glory to God. I, 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 I want us to hear this today because I believe that there's a disconnect between my, my, my public self and my private self. Many, many leaders 
are public successes, but private failures. The kids don't like them. The family don't like them. The dog don't like them. The boss don't like them. Not because, you know, we try to, <laughs> we try to make it somebody else's fault, but it's not. It's us. And it is the undesirable part of our temperament that has never been tempered. The undesirable part of our temperament that has never been tempered, that has never experienced spiritual formation, that we have parts of us that have never been touched by spiritual formation, by the discipleshiping process. And this is why uh, we, we, we have such disconnected behavior. This is why we have uh, uh, unhealthy patterns. Woo, come on. <laughs> come on, John. This is why we 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 don't we have un disconnected uh activity in our life we 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 are seeing <clears throat> one way and we can present ourselves one way but when when the cameras are off uh we we can be we can be we can be a, we can be a, a whole handful god wants to sanctify you completely. One translation says through and through. This is much deeper than I don't wear makeup and I don't go to the show and I don't wear jewelry. This is much deeper than that. An uh, old lady gave a testimony um, and this was her own experience that she had a vision of herself sitting in hell and she was a missionary with the Church of God in Christ and she had on her white habit. She had on her white hat, her white robe that, that is indigenous to the church of God in Christ. She said, the Lord showed her a vision and she was sitting in hell in her white garments. Mm, mm, mm. Woo, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> and um, when she came out of it, she asked the Lord, Lord, what are you showing me? And what the Lord spoke back to her is that you are dressed in white and that is how people see you, but you are harboring unforgiveness. And that is how I see you. Good God Almighty. Somebody, somebody needs to hear that. Whoa. <laughs> She said, Lord, sanctify me. Mm. Somebody say that, Lord, sanctify me. Come on, say, say that, Lord, sanctify me. She said, he said, you are always in white. And that is how the people see you. But you harbor unforgiveness. And that is how I see you. Wow. <laughs> is anybody hearing me? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> sanctify me. Sanctify me. Sanctify me. <laughs> sanctify me. Glory to God. So the part of our temperament that is untempered is what Holy Spirit wants to work on in our lives. That part of us that is uh, untempered, undesirable, undisciplined, undealt with, that anytime somebody tries to touch that part of your life, anytime it pops up when you're not on your best behavior, that is the weakness of your temperament. That's the area. Now, uh, Bishop Jackson was reading uh, this morning uh, in the lectionary, and I want to just help us with this a little bit in Romans 
chapter number eight. Come on, get your paper Bibles. Watch this. That Holy Spirit has been given, and you've heard me say this a thousand times, but I have to keep saying it because I think we forget. <laughs> it says now, Holy Spirit helps in our weaknesses. That is 8 and 26 of Romans. Holy Spirit helps in our weaknesses. Mm. Not our strengths, our weaknesses. Holy Spirit helps in our weaknesses. <laughs> and this is why you and I need the gift of the Holy Ghost in our lives. There is not nobody else in the Godhead, not the Father, not the Son, that helps you with your weaknesses. <laughs> Whoa, Holy Spirit helps you, helps me in 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 our weakness in not just with but in our weaknesses when our weakness is obvious when our weakness is showing up when our weakness is 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 shutting a door or 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 breaking up something that was never intended to be broken our weaknesses for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought but holy spirit himself in this translation himself some say herself but holy spirit makes intercession himself holy spirit himself holy spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings that are not uttered in other words holy spirit is interceding for you and me in our weaknesses without words from us, without us contrib contributing to that conversation. Uh, something um, that I was uh, listening to a video for school and it really, it really made sense to me. Uh, I am writing this dissertation in a couple of months. And um, of course, it's about uh, the Pentecostalization of the Baptist Church at Holy Ghost Cathedral. And um, I am I am listening and reading so much, so many, oh, so many books, so many videos, so many dissertations, so many. It, it, it's it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot. But one of the videos uh, we're talking about writing that literature review. And those of you that have been through the doctoral process, uh, not the dean men, but the uh, doctor, uh, um, the uh, PhD or the EDD, because most times in the doctorate of ministry, you don't have to write, a, I didn't have to write a literature review, but in this you do. And um, the, the video was saying that scholarship is an ongoing conversation that scholarship is an ongoing conversation. So in the research world, there's always research. There's always someone doing a dissertation. There's always someone reading a, a, a review and reading a book and reading uh, uh, the literature, the articles, the journals, because they are going to now write a dissertation. And so that scholarship, I thought this was powerful, is an ongoing conversation, that scholarship. And your dissertation is your voice in an ongoing conversation. That was very powerful for me. <laughs> Prophet Fred Williams, God bless you. Uh, that was very powerful. Wow, wow, Jacqueline Dupree, you have to write a literature for your demon. Wow, yeah, uh, absolutely. It's, in, it's invaluable. It's invaluable for our scholarship that we have a wonderful connection to the scholarship that already exists. 
Now, what that did for me in terms of my, my understanding of Holy Spirit, what that did for me is that that said to me, Holy Spirit is, there is an ongoing conversation that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are having about us. There's an ongoing conversation that Holy Spirit is having with us or uh, about us. Is this ongoing conversation. And in this ongoing conversation, when we pray, we're just simply adding our voice to an ongoing conversation. That thing blew my mind because I'm telling you right now, when I saw it and I understood it, of course, from a theological perspective, that Holy Spirit is always making intercession for us. He's always involved in a conversation. He's always involved in a conversation with the triune God, that God is always having this conversation, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. They are constantly praying and interceding. Jesus on the right hand of the Father, interceding for us. Holy Spirit, interceding, intervening for us in our weaknesses and so when when this begins to happen and we pray we add our voice to an ongoing conversation that's what prayer is that that prayer is an ongoing conversation that the heavens already have it and when you and i pray and we pray in the spirit then we add our voice to that ongoing conversation. I thought that was so amazing. I thought that was very powerful because what it says to us is that while we are in this earth, we've got supernatural intercession. Now, Bishop Vaughn, why do we need that level of intercession? Because of our weakness because of our weaknesses we need that type of ongoing intercession wow that's powerful now where are my weaknesses hiding they are hiding in my temperament that's where my weaknesses are my weaknesses are hiding in my temperament now, my temperament is what I was born with. I'm born with this Adamic nature. But when I give my life to Christ, when I give my life to Jesus Christ, and then I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I now am equipped. Jesus says, I am not enough. You cannot make this journey in the earth with me alone. So receive Holy Spirit. Wow. <laughs> I'm telling you, you you got to hear, you got to hear the word like Holy Spirit be rolling it in my mind. Jesus says, I'm not, I'm not enough. I'm not going to be with you. I'm not enough. I'm not enough. So listen, I got to go. And so you're going to need more than me. Woo, shut up. You're going to need more than me because of your weaknesses. So I'm going to give you Holy Spirit. I'm going to help you to stay out of error. I'm going to give you the spirit of truth. And the spirit of truth is going to keep you out of error. The spirit of truth is going to keep you out of error. Wow. <laughs> Are you hearing me? The spirit of truth is going to keep you out of error. Because your temperament will lead you into error. Now, we talked about these four temperaments and I have to build it up for you because I don't want you to approach this this teaching as if it is a separate 
entity. No, we are teaching on spirit control temperaments. Holy Spirit, help me with me because it is directly connected to your spiritual formation. It is directly connected to how you are discipled. Woo, shataba. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, my God, my God. So I don't want you to say, oh, she's teaching on, you know, temperaments. No, I'm not. I'm really teaching on Holy Spirit. I'm really teaching on the baptism of the Holy Spirit and why you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit to help you with your weaknesses. I'm not just teaching on temperaments. I'm teaching on how your temperament disrupts your sanctification process. See, I don't want you to get to, I want you to understand how you are wired disrupts the sanctification process, the discipleship process, unless you yield to the work of Holy Spirit in your life. Ooh, shatabaha. <laughs> I need you to hear what I'm saying. So I don't just need the Holy Spirit to jump, jump dance, and shout, and speak in tongues. I need that too, though. And I want that too, right? But I really need the Holy Spirit to help me with the things that disrupt my discipleship process that that overturned my character in christ y'all act like holy ghost is an option holy ghost ain't no option for us i don't care if you baptist i don't care if you lutheran i don't care if you presbyterian i don't care if you episcopalian i don't care if you catholic i don't care you need the Holy Ghost to do this thing called life. Woo, shut up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like we, 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 we playing with this. We, we, we want Holy Spirit to work on our body so we can dance, work on our mouth so we can preach, work on our, you know, hands so we can make money. But what about your character? Uh-uh, no, sir, no, sir. Why? Because the God of all peace is going to sanctify you completely. Spirit, soul, and body. Body, soul, and spirit. Your human spirit, your human soul, your human body, all must be blameless. Blameless. When the last time you heard that word? Blameless. That your spirit, soul, body, that your body, soul, spirit must be blameless. And you don't have the ability, the tools, the resources, the intelligence, nor the skill set to get you blameless. Only the God of peace can sanctify. He uses God, Holy Spirit, as an agent of our sanctification. Ooh, Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> he uses Holy Spirit as the agent. He is the envoy, the ambassador of our sanctification. I want to be blameless. Did I handle that well? Did I mishandle it? Do I need to correct that? Do I need to align that? Am I too talkative? Now, that's how we get over into these sanguines. And when we deal with this sanguine, we're talking about the talker. The sanguine is the talker. Sanguine is the talker. That's the one that is gifted and loud and gregarious and outgoing and fun loving, always talking always over committing always you know <laughs> because they're so gifted but although they love people they make friends easily 
They love telling stories. They, they thrive on activity. You'll never find a lazy sanguine. Now, the problem with the sanguine, however, is that their emotional needs are so great that even with all of this loud voice, loud clothes, open mouth, open life, wide eye, always intrigued, in spite of all that, they love attention. And a lot of their doing and a lot of their talking is to compensate for their lack of completing. Their lack of completion. That the sanguine is the starter. Oh my God, if you want something started, you want it to be on fire, you get yourself a sanguine. But watch this. If that sanguine doesn't have another temperament that allows it to settle itself, allows it to calm itself down, allows it to not be so noisy all over in everybody's space, all over in everybody's Facebook business and social media out here in these streets, these if that if that sanguine doesn't have another temperament to temper that, they are the most aggravating. <laughs> they are the most annoying because they're always team too much. Always team too much. They love people, but they thrive on activity. Their struggles is that they can't say no. They talk too much. They lack focus. Watch this and lose track of time. Why? Because they're easily distracted. Everything that sparkles gets their attention. Everything that glitters, they love. That sanguine is, whoa, it's a party. Whoa, it's, it's the roller coaster ride. Whoa, it's gotten candy. Whoa, it's Mickey Mouse. Whoa, it's Disney World. And nothing at home is getting done. <laughs> None of their other assignments are being completed. Start school 15 different times and still haven't finished. Who am I talking to? <laughs> have been in a have, have been in 99 different startup uh, uh, businesses and not one of them is a full service business. Excuse me, people. Y'all know I got this little bug. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> that sanguine is all over everything. Whoa, I can swim. Whoa, I can swing. Whoa, I can say. Whoa, I can preach. Whoa, I can make money. Whoa, I can cook. Whoa, I can babysit. Whoa, I can clean house. Whoa, I can, can do all of it. Just whoa. <laughs> and want to be included. Want to be included now. So if you need some, I can do it. I can do it. I can, and they can. That's that's the that's the weird thing about this thing. When they can do it, they're very skillful and very gifted. But their emotional needs are as big as their personality, and they need acceptance. They need approval of all of their deeds and Sharon says oh my god Sharon says I she said that that's me help me Holy Spirit <laughs> Camilla ooh, don't leave me out team too much I can do it all I can do it all I'm I'm I'm, I'm all of it I'm, I'm 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 everything I can whoo you need food I got you you need a sermon I got you you need a typist I got you you need a mopper, a, a clean, a house cleaner. I got you. Uh, whatever you need, whatever I, I'm back. But nothing ever gets completed because they're so easily distracted. Now, they they are charming. They are very very charming, and they love to laugh. So you want to be in a room with you. You you want them now. When they say I got you. They really don't. They really don't have the skill set that they think they do. They really don't. They they don't really have it, but they're so creative that on the fly, they think they can get it done. So they overspeak. You'll always find the same one lying. Now, they don't know they lie. <laughs> 
They don't really know they're lying. They really think that they're telling the truth. But they really can't do all the stuff they say they can, that they can do. Not well. So this is an area in their discipleship process. This is an area in their discipleship process. Now, I want you to think about Peter as we have continued our study uh, with Peter and how Peter was always talking and how Peter was, was always in the mix, always there, always speaking out, always there. But Peter had some prejudices. Peter had some undesirable areas and it kept coming up. <laughs> Vandella, y'all be lying, but y'all don't know you're lying. You're not doing it malicious because there's not a malicious bone in the same one's body. They just want to be involved. They just want to be included. So yes, I can do it, but they really can't do it. And 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 it, it exposes them, which makes them try to work even harder to be accepted. So now this 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 is where Holy Spirit has to work in your life. <clears throat> now, uh, when we talk about uh, Peter, let's go back to uh, Matthew chapter number sixteen. Oh, I hope that you're taking good notes. Matthew chapter number sixteen, and Jesus asked this huge question. You know, like. Who do people say that I am? So they answered uh, 16 and 14. Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. He said, but who do you say I am? Peter answered, I got the answer. I got the answer. I got the answer. <laughs> That's the kid in the classroom who always got the hand up. Now, they stick their hand up before they even hear the question, but they want to be heard. <laughs> they want to be heard. <laughs> That's the person in the Bible study always want to talk. Uh, Bishop, can I just say this one thing? I just need a few minutes. No, uh, not, not yet. That's that same way. Peter said, thou art the Christ, son of the living God. Jesus said, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. Now watch this. Let's read into verse 18. And I say unto you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, was Jesus building the church on Peter? No. He was building the church. He's built the church on the revelation that Peter had. That thou art the Christ, son of the living God. So he, they, he's, he built the truth on the revelatory truth. He built the church on the revelatory truth that Peter spoke by the spirit of God. By the spirit of God. So saying what's can't hear from God now. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, 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 yes. Now, ah, <laughs> uh, El Tazza, this is not what us Sanguins was expecting this morning. Just hang on, I'm coming to the Melancholics. I'm gonna get it. We all gonna get called out. Praise the Lord. Now, watch this, verse 19, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. This is such a powerful verse. When you understand why Peter got the keys. Oh, Shande. <laughs> why Peter got the keys to the kingdom. This is powerful. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Very, 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 very powerful. Very powerful. Now, remember, I said something to you, and I hope that you're catching this. If you want something started, <laughs> if you want something started, that sanguine is a fire starter. That sanguine is the one that can get people involved. That sanguine is going to talk it up. That sanguine, oh my God, <laughs> they are perfect to start a project. They are perfect. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> absolutely, Thea. The sanguines are the ones that raise their hands, ask the questions. And after you've been in a one million minute hour meeting, 
They want something else they, because they're talkers. They're talkers. They're always talking. Why did Jesus give Peter the keys? Now, remember that the sanguine personality can get the thing started, baby. Hey, that sanguine can get it started. Let me tell you something. If the sanguine doesn't have another dominant temperament that that tempers the sanguine, the very thing they started, they will destroy. Ooh, good morning, Dr. Kadisha. Ooh, but never get that was my brother. She's talking, laughing, and never got anything started. Sanguine. So you want a sanguine to either have a, a choleric or a phlegmatic secondary temperament, or that needs to be the person in their space. So watch this. Jesus says, okay, Peter, since you popped off with the answer, I will give you these keys. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound. And whatever you lose will be loosed in heaven. Now, you've got to understand, come on, somebody, Sharon, if, if, if it's a job uh, that, that I need done, I'm going to call a sanguine. Elder Lottie Jones, I'm going to call, I'm going to call a sanguine. I, I, I'm going to call somebody that can rally the people. I'm going to call a tab. I'm going to somebody that can rally the people and get them going and get them excited. They're charismatic. I'm going to call uh, evangelist Letitia Walker. They're charismatic. They can attract people. They, they can, what? but you got to be careful with that sanguine. Now, the weakness of that sanguine is where Holy Spirit's got to work. Not the strength. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Whoa, who am I talking to? Now, if you are dating a sanguine or if you have a child that's a sanguine or you're in a, a business venture with a sanguine or the let's just say that there's a a sanguine choleric let's just say that there is a blend of a sanguine uh cor corlet now we say corletta right correct <laughs> that's saying chlor all right so you have that two in in that blend you have the extrovert i don't like that word but you have the powerful blend of a sand chlor all right the 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 the, the these two if, if they're blended together you got a starter and a finisher all right now if you don't have that as your dominant if you have a melancholy as 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 a part of your temperament or you even if you have a a, a phlegmatic oh lord <laughs> see that sanguine is already emotional that melancholic is emotional but it's the down mallet, it's the downside of emotional. Whereas the sanguine is the upside of the emotion. And I believe Peter was a sanguine male. I believe he was a sang male because just as powerful as he could be, up is as low as he could go down. He can pop off so fast. That's why the boy got his ear cut off. <laughs> <laughs> pop off. See, just, just pop off. You ain't going to threaten us. Who you think you at? You know, that sanguine can get bossy. That sanguine can get reactive. Don't process because a sanguine is not a thinker. A sanguine is a talker. Sanguine is not a doer. Sanguine is the talker. And so that, that sanguine can pop off and, 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 and listen, can get stuff backwards. You are one of them. I'm not one of them. You are one of them. I'm not one of them. You are one of them. I'm not one of them. And he cusses. And Jesus looks at it. See, I told you. Popping off at the mouth, but on the wrong side. So when you deal with a, sang a sanguine male, extremely emotional, laugh hysterically one minute, and burst into tears the next. Now, we're going to be talking about these blends. I don't want to get so deep into the blends, but I want you to understand why you have 
two dominant temperaments. And both of those temperaments carry strengths and weaknesses. But by the spirit of God, if you are yielding to spirit, if you're yielding to the truth, if you're being established in the word of God, then your character alignment can still progress. And you don't, you'll be more aware of your weaknesses, but you don't have to allow your weakness to discombobulate your life. You don't have to allow your weaknesses. Why? Because you have a helper. You have a helper. You have a helper. The helper is Holy Spirit. What is he helping you with? Your weaknesses. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? All right. So he gives them the keys. And on the day of Pentecost, guess who pops up with the sermon? The same one. <laughs> Y'all got to hear this. The sanguine pops up. Appalachian, sanguine, a pure sanguine. <laughs> when, I, when, I, when I run into these, see, and when you know how someone is wired, you can have a much better relationship with them. If you're the shepherd of the church, you know your leadership team's temperaments. Now you know by the spirit how to deal with them, who to put where. You know, the last thing you want is a, a male male in charge of anything because they're going to drag it down. All right? That phlegmatic is as stubborn as it can be. And it's not really a team player. Fleck wants to always be in isolation by itself. So that's not the person to put in charge of your committees. But the flag brings a certain balance but not the person that you say, okay, you can start this, you can do, no, because they don't really care for people. They really can operate alone and in isolation. So that sanguine or that choleric is, 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 so when you're looking at starting a business, when you're looking at marriage, when you're looking at relationships, when you're looking at your children, how you're going to guide your children and navigate their lives and shape them for life. You need to know this information. Are you listening to me? <laughs> oh my God, oh my God. And so we have to be very, very, very careful, uh, particularly when it comes to that sanguine. Sanguines can be very egotistical. Sanguines will interrupt you. Sanguines are compassionate, but they're very impulsive. Sanguines are disorganized. As much as they try to be in everything, they're also very impractical. You're very impractical. You don't consider the long game. You don't consider the strategies that's going to be needed to carry it all the way. You don't consider what could be the outcome of this decision. You don't consider that because you're so impulsive. Who am I talking to? You're refreshing. You're lively spirited. You're spontaneous. You're delightful to be with. You're enjoyable. You're popular. You're bouncy. But you're also restless. Ooh, who am I talking to? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you have difficulty concentrating. <laughs> You have difficulty coming up with solutions. If it was a good idea and you felt good, you get, but if it go bad, you don't really know all the time because you, you're not given to that part of the outcome. You're given to the start. So Peter, I'm gonna give you this key. And this key is going to unlock the kingdom. And so when the spirit of the Lord fell on the day of Pentecost. There were others. There was 120 in the room. The same way that Peter popped up and got out of the boat and walked on the water. It's the same reason that the same Peter popped up and gave the Pentecost day message. And opened the kingdom of God to all of the thousands that had surrounded Jerusalem for the Feast of the Harvest. Jesus was strategic, said, Peter, I'm going to give you this key. Didn't give it to John. 
We're going to find out why little John didn't get it. Certainly he couldn't give it to Matthew. <laughs> Nobody trusted him. But Peter, even at, that's why when you, when, you, when you go back, watch this. I want you to see this. Glory to God. I want you to see this. And this is such a power. Oh, my God. I can't believe my time. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe my time is gone. Lord Jesus. Oh, God. I, but this is why when Jesus uh, ra was raised from the dead, after Peter had denied uh, Jesus, Jesus was very sp specific uh, when he said now, even though Peter has denied me, come on now, even though Peter has denied me, make sure you bring Peter to meet me. Make sure you get Peter. Tell the disciples and Peter. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is so powerful because Peter, who was the denier, the cursor, the profaner. Now he's feeling ostracized because sanguines can get in their emotions. But Jesus, knowing that he had this, remember Jesus looked at him when he did it. So Jesus knew that, but he was very yet mindful that Peter also had those keys. <laughs> See, you always need a sanguine. My God. No matter how squirrely they get, you'll always need that same. So go and tell my disciples and Peter to meet me. Saying was you're very needed. You're very, very necessary. But you've got to allow Holy Spirit to temper you. You've got to allow Holy Spirit to temper you. You've got to allow the Spirit of God to temper that temperament. You are very needed. We're going to go deeper into this and we're going to keep going. If you're learning, put it in the chat, learning. If this is blessing, you say blessing. Put, put something in that chat because we're going to go through all of these temperaments, but we're going to take our time each week to dig into the strengths and the weaknesses because ultimately what you want to be is like Jesus. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> share this on your page i love y'all so much thank you ig thank y'all so much you don't want to miss make sure you put this on your pages hallelujah and make sure that you gather people listen bishop is teaching on the spirit control temperaments spirit we're getting ready for pentecost don't forget pentecost in detroit may 26 27 and 28 don't forget free to all all you got to do is get on the plane, get on the boat, get on the wagon, get on your strollers, get in your bicycles, get whatever, and get to Detroit, May 26, 27, and 28 for Pentecost. We are on our way to Pentecost, and we're preparing ourselves for a move of God. I got to go. Have a super one. Oh, my God. I got to get out of here.